if blocks, repeat blocks, and clone blocks. Are you here because you're wondering how to use those scratch control blocks? Well stick around because in this scratch games tutorial for beginners, we'll be making a super simple shooter game that will use all these blocks. Coming up. Hello world, Surfing Scratcher here, teacher, surfer, programmer, bringing you the goodness of learning to code through video tutorials. If it sounds like something that you're into, then consider hitting that subscribe button. Check out the show notes below by hitting that show more button as a link to a starter project that you'll need for this tutorial. All right, how about we gain some control over those blocks? All right, so I click the green flag and it shows that we're in space. There's a laser down the bottom here that shoots some laser beams. Now, our job is to hit these space objects while avoiding these asteroids that are being flung down at us. If an asteroid collects us, well, game over. Let's jump inside. First thing you'll need is to create these space objects and if you can't be bothered doing that, then check out the starter project in the description below. Bit of housekeeping, the only thing that we want displayed on the screen is our laser. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these other four sprites here. Rather than using code to do that, I'm just going to flick the hidden switch. To signal the start of our game, all these stars appear on the screen. So let's jump over and do that. Head into your star sprite, jump over to the events category first and grab out a when the green flag is click block. Now let's start exploring the control category. We want heaps of stars to come out on the screen. So what we're going to do is use this repeat block. And what a repeat block does is it executes all these instructions that are inside of it for this number of times. So if I connect it to this green flag, click, and I press it, it will repeat nothing 10 times. Let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's repeat and grab our next control block, creating a clone of itself. So what this does is it's going to create a clone of the star, a copy. If I click the green flag and nothing happens still. We need the next control block. So when we start as a clone, so when we create a clone, we can signal for this sprite to start a sequence of instructions when the clone is created. We don't see any clones on the screen, so let's go show it. Jump over to the looks and find the show block. Press the green flag and you'll see that one dot appeared on the screen. The reason for that is that all the stars are currently stacked on top of each other. We need to change that. Jump over to the motion category, drag out the stack block that is go to a random position. We'll click the green flag and now we've got 10 stars that have appeared in our screen. I'm going to update this value to 50. Press the green flag and now we've got 50 stars in our screen. All right, here I am the laser sprite and I've just dragged out a when the green flag is clicked block. What we want to do now is get our laser moving across the screen. To do that, we want to sense if the left or the right arrow has been pressed. So we've got a control block that can help us out. What this will do is if this Boolean condition is met, then we'll execute some code. So what is this condition? We'll jump over into the sensing and drag out the key pressed Boolean block and change it to a right arrow and then slot it inside the if statement there. Basically, if this is true, then execute the code that's inside this C block. Head over to the motion and just grab a move 10 steps and we're just about there. You might be thinking if we connect this, this will work, but it won't. I'm pressing the right key and nothing's happening. Why is that? This is a common issue for new scratches. This only executes when the green flag is clicked. So what we need to do is wrap this in another control block and that block is a forever block. A forever block, it's just like the repeat block, but instead of doing it 10 times, it never ends. I click the green flag now and I can move right, but I can't move left. So what I need to do is right click on this if statement, duplicate it and put it below. And instead of the right arrow, let's go to the left arrow and let's move back 10 steps. Click the green flag and boom. Jump over to your beam sprite and head over to the events category and look for the when the space key is pressed. If you don't see space there, just hit the drop down and select it. What we want to do is we want to create a clone of the beam. Whenever we create a clone, we want to do something when we start as a clone. The first thing we should do when we start as a clone is actually show ourselves. So head over to looks and drag out the show block. You're gonna hit the space bar and look, there is our beam. But it's no good over there. We need to place it where our laser is. So also when we start as a clone, head over to your motion and we want to not go to a random position, but go to the position of the laser. You're gonna press the space bar and boom, we've got a beam coming out of our laser. We need to now get this beam moving across the screen. To do that, head back over to the control category and we're going to learn about our next control block, the repeat until. So remember that these repeat blocks, they loop. It just loops over and over again. And instead of doing it a set number of times, we're going to repeat until this condition becomes true. What is it that we want to repeat? We want to move our beam across the screen. So let's change the Y value by 10. If I press the space bar now, you'll see our beam go across the screen. I think we should move our beam across the screen until it hits the edge. So jump across into the sensing and until we are touching 
the edge. Press the spacebar and then Okay, after we've finished executing this script, we want to delete the clone. So head back down into the control and find the block that deletes the clone. Just click the green flag and I hit the space bar and you'll see our beam disappears as it hits the edge of the screen. I'm now in the spaceship sprite and I've just dragged out another when the green flag is click block. Drag out a forever block and you also want to drag out another create clone of the spaceship. But we don't want to do this immediately. We're going to learn about our next block and that is this wait stack block. So we want to wait one second and then we will create a copy of the spaceship. This can also be a decimal value. Drag out another when I start as a clone hap block. And we also want to show the spaceship. Jump back over to your control category and drag out this gnarly double C block here. I've got another video that will explain this in a little bit more detail, but I'll give you a snippet of it now. Think of this block as a light switch. If the light switch is on, then execute this code here. Otherwise, if it's off, do this. The reason we're going to be using this double C block is because we want to decide whether to start the spaceship on the left side of the screen or on the right side of the screen. So to do that, head over to your operators and find the reporter block that picks a random number. We're going to pick a random number between 0 and 1. If I just click this block a few times, it'll pop up with a value. There we go, it's gone to 1, it's gone to 0, it's gone to 1, 1, there we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to check this random number if it's equal to 0 or 1. To do that, we need to get the boolean block that has the equal sign. Let's put that reporter block inside the start, connect it all up. Now it's never going to be equal to 50, we need to make it equal to 0 or 1. So what this says, if this random number is equal to 1, then we're going to start our spaceship on one side of the screen. Otherwise, let's put it on the other. Head over your motion to find the set x block. Okay, I'm going to click the green flag and every second it's either going to start on the right side of the screen or the left. Let's get that spaceship moving with a glide to random position block. And you'll see our spaceships now starts to take off. But you'll see they're also hanging around the screen, so we need to jump back into our control blocks and delete them after they've glided to that spot. Press the green flag, spaceships glide across the screen and disappear. I'm actually just going to scroll up and grab this code here right at the top, drag it across into the sprite pane on top of the asteroid and drop it. I'm going to go inside the asteroid and you'll see that that code is just being copied across to it. The only thing I'm going to change is one second to two seconds. Go ahead and grab another when I start as a clone hat block. All right, when the asteroid starts as a clone, we're going to set its X value, so its horizontal value, to a random position. We're going to set it to a position between negative 200 and 200. I'm just going to click the green flag here and reveal our asteroids. You're going to see some asteroids pop up here on the screen in random X positions. Head on over to the sensing category and, and find the reporter block that says distance to. We're going to go the distance to the laser. What this block does is it draws a line from the laser to the asteroid and works out a value. So if I press it, currently it's around 296. Now if I move the laser and I press this again, you'll see the value has updated to 341. If I move the laser directly under the asteroid again and I press this, you'll see that it's around about 295, so just under 300. We want this asteroid hurtling towards the laser. So what I'm thinking is when the distance is under 300 between these two, then start moving the asteroid in the direction of the laser. I'm going to drag out another block that we haven't talked about. This is wait until block. So we're going to wait until the distance to the laser is under 300. Head over to your operators and grab a less than boolean block and drag in that reporter block and change the value to 300. So what this is saying is we're going to wait until the distance, so the straight line between the asteroid and the laser is less than 300. So this is the flag to start moving our asteroid. Now let's move the asteroid. Grab out another repeat until block. We're going to repeat until we touch the edge. And we're going to change the Y by negative 15. We're also going to turn clockwise by 15 degrees. The last thing we want to do is delete the clone when we're finished. So if I click the green flag, and wait for an asteroid to appear. If I move beneath it, it starts to hurtle towards us. The last thing we want to do for our asteroid is sense if the asteroid actually touches our laser. So if our asteroid is touching the laser, then we want to jump back into our control and stop everything. So this will stop every single script in the project, including deleting all the clones that have been created. You can also just stop the scripts in this set of instructions, or you can stop the other scripts that are in this sprite. We just need to tidy up a couple of aspects of our game. First, let's hide the asteroid when it starts as a clone. 
And then after the distance is under 300, we need to show the asteroid. Head over to the spaceship sprite. We need to detect when a beam has hit a spaceship. When I start as a clone, forever, if touching beam, wait 0.05 seconds, then you want to delete the clone. Press the green flag and now we should see our spaceships disappear when we hit them some beams. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is jump into our beam sprite and we want to continue moving our beam until it hits the edge or it hits a spaceship because currently our beams can pass through spaceships. If I just demonstrate this here, uh, the beams continue to go. So jump into the operators, grab an ore block, duplicate this touching block, and hit the drop down menu and find spaceship. Grab that sensing boolean block and place it inside the all boolean block and put them both inside that condition. I'll zoom out so you can see them both. And there we go. If I press the green flag now uh, and we hit a spaceship, the beam should also disappear and it does. Make sure you go ahead and you hide all the switches again. Cool, congratulations on making through the Scratch Control Box tutorial. You've now got a starter project, a starter game that you can build upon, you can make lives, you can create a timer, you can create a score with like some hits of these spaceships now. It's sort of endless, so I encourage you to go ahead and see if you can tinker with this game to create something awesome. It's time for a scratchy question. Now a game isn't a game without some kind of score. So how could you remix this project to include some kind of scoring system? Share a link to your remix project below in the comments or tell me how you'd go about it. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial on Scratch Control Blocks. Like, subscribe, ring that bell if you're new around here and have a scout some of the other content on your screen right now. If you want to show your support for Surfing Scratcher, then you can check out my Patreon page, link below in the description. But until then, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.